Hi guys, welcome to Introduction to Rust. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be looking at Rust and WebAssembly through this U framework. So I've been wanting to do a WebAssembly project for a while and I came across this U framework a few days ago. So this is a relatively new Rust framework that was created by an individual and the idea is fairly cool. Basically U is like Elm programmed in Rust. It follows the model view controller programming model that Elm uses, and it uses reactive programming like Elm does as well. We're going to be building a to-do application inside of you today. And if you're interested in looking at the Elm equivalent of this application, then go ahead and look at my Elm tutorial part three because the two programs are almost identical in syntax and execution. There are various things that you need to do to get WebAssembly working with Rust. The first one is to get Cargo Web. Run Cargo Install Cargo Web, and this will give you Cargo Web. Then the next thing you want to do is install the target for WebAssembly, which is ASMJS Unknown EM Scripten. Now the EM Scripten SDK is traditionally used to compile C and C++ and other low-level languages like that into JavaScript and WebAssembly. And in this case, we're using it to compile our Rust into WebAssembly slash JavaScript. Also, because we are using EM Scripten, we need to actually get the SDK. So we go to downloads and then if we're on Windows, we get this 64-bit SDK. If you're on Linux and Mac, you can get this SDK. And then there are installation instructions, which are fairly simple. You just want to run these commands inside of your terminal or command line. And if you're on Windows, you just replace these commands with these commands here. All right, so I am in my EM SDK folder here, and I want to run the command so that I can actually add all that stuff to my path. So here's the command that I need to run. This will add it all to my path for this particular command line. I do not want it to be global, and you'll see why here in a moment. All right, so here are the directories that were added to the path. You'll notice that, for instance, it has its own CLang compiler. It has its own version of Node. Both of these are fairly old. The same with the Python version, which is 2.7.5, and then even Java is only 7.5. Four, five. If you do any coding in Java, Python, Node, or C, then you don't really want these on your path permanently. That's why it's really nice to have this little script that allows you to just temporarily set up the environment. All right, so now that we have our environment set up, let's create our project. So I'm going to do this by running cargo new to do app. And of course, this is going to be a binary. We need to bring in the U dependency. And because it's not on crates.io yet, we need to point it towards the Git repository. So you'll see here that it says U equals, and then we have a pair of curly brackets inside of which it says Git equals, and then the GitHub repository that U resides in. We want to bring in our U external crate, and we also want to make sure to add the attribute macro U's to the top. This will allow us to get the macros from inside the crate as well. And because macros are extremely important in this particular package, we certainly need them. And then we want to glob import U HTML, and this will expose all the portions of the U library that we want. Now, like with an Elm project, we want to set up our model first. Now this is a to-do app, so our model will be fairly simple. We'll create a struct called model. Inside of it, we'll have two fields. One will be called input, which will be the input field that we actually enter our to-dos in. And then we'll have our actual to-do list, which will be a vector filled with string. The equivalent Elm code would be input as a string and then to-dos as a list of strings. Of course, vectors and lists are completely different, but that's a discussion for another time. We also want to create our message union type. Now, messages in Elm and in U are essentially the actions that the program can actually take to change the state. So for Rust, we want to create our union type by using an enum. And then we want to consider, well, what are all the different actions that we can take inside of a to-do app? Well, we can add to-dos. We can update our to-dos and we'll pass a string through that one. We can remove to-dos from our vector. And so we're going to pass a u size in here because we can remove them by index. We can remove all of our to-dos. So this will allow us to completely destroy our vector and we can do nothing. This will help us when we want our application to not respond to what the user is actually doing. Then we want to create an update function. This will take in a mutable reference to our context with message inside of it. Then it will take a reference to our mutable model and then it will take in a message. And this function essentially is where all of the state changes for our application reside. We want to pattern match on message here. And of course, because it's exhaustive pattern matching, 
we need to create cases for each of our messages. Now I'm going to just leave these cases empty for now so that we can build out the view. And like with Elm, our view function takes in our model and it outputs an HTML message. Inside of you we have a macro called HTML and this basically allows us to write HTML right directly inside of our Rust application. We have a div and inside of it we have an h1 that has the string of to do app. Now notice that if we want to put some actual Rust code inside of our HTML here we need to surround it in curly brackets. So this is a slice of string but it will act like a string inside of our HTML. We also want an input here so that we can input our to do's. Then we want to have a div and then inside of it we'll have a button that will allow us to remove all of our to do's. And finally for the actual list itself we'll have a div and then we'll have an unordered list and we'll use some Rust here to allow us to input the actual list item one at a time. And this is something that we'll get to here in a moment. First, let's actually wire up our application so that we can see this being rendered. We instantiate our model with the initial values that we want. So our to-do should be empty when we first start the application and our input should also be an empty string. And then we're going to call this program function and put in our initial model, our update function, and our view function. Again, this is very, very similar to how you would do things in an Elm application. So we can run Cargo Web Start to compile our application and put it on a web server. And this web server also comes with hot reloading so that every single time we change our application and resave it, it will automatically recompile it and then reserve it on the server. We get this little description here that tells us what happened to our application. And you can see here that it says we can access the web server at localhost 8000. And here is the view that we created. So we have our H1 with to do app, and then we have our input, and then we have our button to delete all of the to do's. Now, of course, none of this has any functionality yet. So let's actually add some of that. So first let's address our add message. What we want our add message to do is to first clone whatever's in our input, then push that into our model to do's vector, and then replace what's in our input with an empty string. Then for our update message, we're going to take the string that we passed through the message and we're just going to set our model.input equal to that string. For our remove message, we're going to take our model to do's vector and we're going to run the remove method with it and we're going to pass in the integer that we've passed through our remove message into it to remove that index from our vector. Finally, for our remove all message, we want to just simply reset our model to do's to an empty vector. All right, so now let's wire this up to our view. First, we wanna put a placeholder in our input. So this will just be a little text to tell the user what they need to do to get the application to work. And in this case, we just wanna say, what do you want to do? We have to put a comma after each of these components that we put inside of our elements. Then we want to signify that the value of our input is our model.input. Then we want to have an on input listener for our input. And this will take in a closure, which takes in input data, which is something that comes from the U library. And it will call our message update with E dot value inside of it. And the value is of course our model dot input. So this gets passed up to here as a string and it gets put into our input. Next we want to add an on key press listener to allow the user to enter in the actual data. In this case, we want the user to press enter to put a to do into the list. So our closure here takes in key data. And basically we want to check inside of our closure if E dot key is equal to enter. And if it is, we'll use our message add. Otherwise, we'll use message nothing. So if the user hits enter, it will invoke our add pattern, which will automatically add the input to our list. Otherwise, nothing will happen. So if we actually want to see whether or not this is all working, we can just create a paragraph tag here. And inside of it, we can put in model.input. And this will show us what the user is typing into the input as they're typing it in. And so if we open up our application here, you can see now this says, what do you want to do? And we can type in something like buy milk 
and you can see here that buy milk appears next to it and as we type in letters it just keeps getting added in real time and if we hit the enter key it disappears now let's wire up our button with an on click event our button takes an on click it has a closure which takes in an element which we're going to leave anonymous in this case and it just fires our message remove all which means it will remove all of the to do's from our to-do list now to actually create our to-do list we want to come up here and we want to create a closure our closure is going to be called view to do and it will take in a tuple of i to do which will be a use size and reference to string and then we'll use our html macro so that we can actually render the html and at first we can simply create our list element then we can call our format macro so that we can give it a space and maybe even put a pipe in here and we'll call this on a reference to our to do and now we can come down here to our unordered list and create a for loop of model dot to do's dot iter so we're creating an iterator and then we're going to enumerate across that iterator this will return numbers for each of the indexes of our elements as well as the elements themselves and then we're going to map those numbers and the values onto our closure up here and that's why we're passing in this tuple here because it will pass back a use size which is the index and then a to do which is the string so the actual element inside of our models dot to do we can add items to our to do list like this so for instance if I type in learn rust and hit enter you'll see that it gets added to our list and if I want to delete all the items I can just hit delete all to do's and they'll all disappear now, of course, we do not have the ability to delete individual items yet, so let's add that now. Back inside of our closure up here, let's create a button for each of our list items, and this button will allow us to delete the individual item that it's tied to. Inside of each list item, we'll have a button, and the on-click event will be a closure, which we'll then just call message remove with our index inside of it. And each of the buttons will be a big X. And you'll see here that we're getting an error and that's because we need to make this into a move closure so that it actually takes ownership of our index. All right, so now this should properly work for each element. It says the element and then there's a little space and a pipe and then we have our button with an X on it. And if we click this X button, it deletes the element. And you can see here that I could just add a bunch of different elements. And then if I want to remove one at a time, I can just click the X's and it will remove them from our vector. If you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to subscribe and like. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment box below. And if you dislike the video, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.